everyone if you're able to stand would you join me in standing as we sing onward christian soldiers onward christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of jesus front of us as we charge and as we're marching on lord we thank you so much for being right there with us and uh, promising never to leave us nor forsake us lord we thank you so much for those promises you've given us I pray now lord that you be with this service be with pastor ryan 
Give him the, the, the power and the strength as he brings your words, your message to us tonight. In your wonderful, beautiful name we pray. Amen. All right, you may be seated. We'll sing our next congregational song. Sound the battle cry. See the foes. Let me just tell you what we're what the plan is. Is after the the offering this evening, what we'll do is we'll have the seniors come up, and that'll be the time for them to uh, tell us what their plans are for the summer. Uh, the graduating seniors, what their plans are for the summer, and what they think God's will may be for them in the fall. Okay, uh, you may want to say thank you to your parents for all the suffering they've had to deal with you over the last few. Uh, whatever you want to do, but uh, at least if you'll share with the church family uh, those things, what your plans are for the summer and then what you think God will have you be doing in the fall, okay? Um, I'd like to give you a prayer request now, too, while it's on my mind. I was talking with the, uh, to texting with, I guess, Pastor Allen this afternoon. Uh, Pastor Seal of Crocker Bible Baptist Church, I think that is in Chesterton, uh, he died suddenly of a heart attack Friday morning. Uh, so their church is without a pastor there. It was unexpected. Uh, so if you just remember the Crocker Bible Baptist Church, they, they would appreciate that, Okay. Also, this morning, the offering was really good for the, the missions envelopes that we mentioned to you about the, the chairs. We exceeded the limit on that uh, by more than $400, so thank you for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that money and put it right into next month as we're raising funds for uh, Bibles for uh, Cambodia and then also uh, children's workbooks. That's what they're about. Now, the cost is roughly, Brother Chris said, $13.50 for a Bible. And then it's 10 bucks for the children's program stuff. Uh, we're not setting a cap on that. Just whatever comes in in the month of June, we'll purchase as many Bibles and workbooks as we can for our missionary in Cambodia. Okay, that's what we'll do. So we're off to a good start, and we haven't even officially started next week, Sunday. So, again, we're not going to do this every month, but just as projects come available. These have been in the works for a while. We just haven't brought them up yet. Uh, so we're going to do that, and then we'll give you a little bit of a break on that. So thank you for giving, and then pray about what you can give toward the, the Bibles in Cambodia. Okay? All right, uh, things again to Tuesday. If you have uh, mon uh, Tuesday morning free, 8 o'clock is uh, um, men's breakfast uh, at Burger King. Uh, those for in the Faith Bible Institute, if you have not taken your test yet, just a reminder, you need to get those done. Uh, I think Ms. Smith said by June 4th, okay? You need to get that done by June 4th, okay? Uh, ladies have coffee and fellowship every Wednesday at 1 o'clock. And then, of course, we're going to focus on about our counseling ministry again. I don't know if you've had a chance to look at the table back there, but there are some really good things. Even if you don't know somebody right now who has an issue or you, but there are some good material out there for you to be reading, gain some more knowledge about how you can help, uh, help people in a time of need. 
Uh, this next Wednesday will be our last Wednesday uh, service and for, the, for the months of June and July. Remember, the first Sunday in, or first Tuesday, excuse me, first Tuesday in June will be our Together Tuesdays, okay? So remember, this Wednesday will be the last one, and then it will be a Tuesdays. Um, let's see what else we got here. June 11th, baptism after the morning service. Again, June 11th also is our early afternoon service. So what we'll be doing is a regular service in the morning. We'll have a baptism, then we'll have dinner. Uh, again, that will be like a fundraising dinner if you'd like to give to the kids going to Camp Kobiak. And then the early afternoon service will be made up of our teenagers. And what they'll be doing the singing, leading the music, uh, specials, and preaching in the afternoon service. Okay, That's June the 11th. VBS coming up in the third week of June. And then June 24th is the 80th birthday party for Dave Wilson here at the church. Uh, ladies retreat, again, if you'd like to sign up for that, uh, again, please do so. You have to do that online. And then, again, it is the second week uh, of the ladies retreat that you want. And, uh, Beth Lee Young is the, is the week that we are going. If you need help signing up for that, let us know. We'll get that taken care of. Um, Open houses you see listed there, again, starting up again this week. The Friday will be an open house for Peter Wallsmith at their home from 4 until dark. June the 10th, Natalie and Lillian right here at the church from 12 until 3. And then on the 17th, Bridget will be here from 1 until 4 for their open houses. Okay, so if you can squeeze those in, mark those on your calendar. We'd love to have you come and visit and congratulate our young people. Okay, all right. I, hopefully I haven't forgotten anything. So ushers, if you'll come, we'll take up the evening offering and then... Uh, I'll have the graduate seniors come up here. Uh, you can doesn't matter what order you want to stand is fine. I will call you uh, uh, alphabetically, okay? But you can just line up however you want here, okay? All right, I'm going to ask Mr. Stoney if he'd pray for the offering, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for, Lord, another opportunity to be in your house tonight. Uh, thank you for all the good that you do for us, Lord. Father, we bring uh, Crocker Baptist Church to you this, this evening. Uh, Father, we pray that you might fill that spot now, uh, comfort them and give them strength as they go through this time of need. Uh, bless our time together tonight, bless the preaching of your word, and we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're leaving. Your job's not done yet, okay? All right. All right. Uh, seniors, graduate seniors, if you'll go ahead and come up here and stand up here. Remember, we're not embarrassing you. We are here for you. We're your family. One of the girls was saying, I don't know what I'm going to say. And look, I'm assuming I'm speaking for you. I try to give you guys a good report. All we do is we care about these young people. We're excited for them. We're just interested in what God's going to do in their lives okay so alphabetically you may not like it that way but uh bridget brown uh, if you'll come on up here bridget and again we have a nice thompson chain reference bible here for all our graduates so if you would tell us what your plans are for the summer and what you think you're doing in the fall okay um, uh, you come right here you gotta stand uh, okay. here. Right. um i have a 
job this summer, and then I'm going to Hiles in the fall. Is that good enough? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mom, for all your prayers. Oh, thank you, Mom, mom <laughs> so much. I'm so glad that you brought me to this world so that I could stand in front of here and be nervous in front of everyone. <laughs> That'll work. All right. <laughs> Yes, you mean it. You won't embarrass you to have Stanford to everybody else. Okay. All right. Well, this, you, this is a real graduate. He knew he was second in line. Peter Fecto, <laughs> come on up here, okay? You, you go ahead. You got to stay um, Thank you for mom and dad for taking me down to Florida for my graduation, even though I, at first I didn't want to go. I just wanted to do it online. But uh, my plans are I want to go down to I, – I, I'm going down to camp on Wednesday, and then after I get back from camp uh, – I'm planning on joining the electrician's union, but if uh, God changes it, he does. So um, I'll be praying about that during the summer. And uh, thank you, everybody, for all your support. Good man. Thank you. We will definitely be praying that God changes his mind, okay? So, all right. This next, uh, next person you guys may not know very well, but any chance I have to embarrass her, that's what I'm going to do. So Michaela Clavon is actually the next person in the line. They're not necessarily official members of our church, but I knew she was graduating, so I, like I said, I want to embarrass her, so she's going to come here. And she tells <laughs> okay. um, this summer I will be working, and then this fall I'm going to Pensacola Christian College to major in professional writing. All right, see, that was a tough thing, young lady. <laughs> Now, she is somewhat like Peter Fecto, that her parents took her down to Florida for her high school graduation as well, okay? All right, this time uh, Lillian will come, and of course, I think most of us know Lillian, okay? So Lillian? Um, this summer, I'm just gonna be working, and then in the fall, I'm going to Hiles Anderson, and I'm going to be majoring in teaching, minoring, and missions. I didn't hear anything about your MRS degree, but we'll work on that too, okay? All right, so. Natalie was mentioning that earlier to me, but she said, I could, she said I could announce that publicly. My dad would not appreciate that. Okay? So Natalie. So I don't really have any summer plans beyond working, and in the fall, I'm going to Hiles Anderson. All right, we're excited for you. Her dad and her mom are thankful that she is working this summer, okay? <laughs> and has college bills, and they'll have three of them in college this fall, so that, that's a lot going on. All right, Miss Angel. Right, well, I just want to start by saying thank you. Thank you all for your prayers and support. Um, like Peter mentioned, going down to Kobiak on Wednesday, working in the hospitality, working the shops up there. And then in the fall, I'm going to Commonwealth Baptist in Lexington, Kentucky for office management secretarial degree. Who said you were next? <laughs> I'm just, that's, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, during the summer, I'm going to be working, and uh, so I, for the fall, I, uh, I haven't um, decided on a college yet. Hiles Anderson may be one of them, but uh, it depends on what they offer. Like, um, so I might be going for a creative writing. Um, I like singing, you know, I like uh, that, and um, I'm trying to think. I also like uh, graphic design, maybe, like for like, I don't know, like logos and stuff, like, because uh, I love sketching. Now I wonder who's next. Can you figure out who's next? I will say this, young people, too. Uh, if you open your Bibles and if you got the wrong person's Bible, go ahead and change it with them. <laughs> So over the summer, I plan to play baseball and work, and um, in the fall, I want to go to either Valpo or Grace. Mm -hmm. All right. Congratulations. I know it's an exciting time for our seniors, and I'm excited for them, uh, but then you know what? They still need prayer. You guys have been good about praying for them during their teenage years. Let's keep praying for them because a lot can go on during the college age years as well. Okay, for Lodot? I think if you're able to stand, would you join me as we stand and sing our final congregational song for this evening? 
May the Lord find us faithful. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but has given us the strength to obey. With power and sound with all the unfailing kind, oh, be not ashamed of His way. May the Lord find us singing, the kids can go ahead and be dismissed for the evening, uh, for their evening church service, okay?
Open up your Bibles to the book of 1 Kings, chapter number 3. The book of 1 Kings, chapter number 3. All right, we'll be in first, starting 1 Kings, chapter number 3. We'll read there, then we'll kind of be jumping around through 1 Kings, through the uh, story of Solomon. So we'll be reading um, in chapter Three and chapter 9, and then we'll be ending up in chapter number 11. 1 Kings chapter number 3, and look at verse number 3. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. Jump down to verse 5. And Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept, him, hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. And I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast Chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this so great a people? Jump down to verse number 13. And I, was, and I have also given thee that which thou hast also asked, this is God speaking to Solomon, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like Unto thee all thy days, and if thou shalt, and if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then will I lengthen thy days. So turn to chapter nine of First Kings. Look at First Kings nine, verse number two, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time, as he had appeared unto him at Gibeon. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou, thou hast built to put thy name there forever. And mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. And if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked in integrity of heart and in uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded thee and will keep my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever, as I promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. Turn with me to chapter number 11. Chapter number 11 of 1 Kings. Look at verse number 9. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. And had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Tonight, with God's help, I'm going to preach a message entitled, Don't Turn Away from God. Don't Turn Away from God. Let's pray. Dear Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day. We just thank you for everything that you've done, Lord. I just thank you for uh, what this night is, Lord, with um, seniors, Lord. Just I'm thankful for them and their faithfulness and their testimony. Lord, I pray you just um, bless them, Lord. And Lord, I pray now as we come to the preaching of your word, Lord, I pray you be with me as I bring forth your word, Lord. Just fill me with the Holy Spirit. Empty me of myself and cleanse me from any sin, Lord, so that I can be a usable vessel in your hand. Lord, I pray that tonight we won't leave here just challenged or convicted, but we'll leave here changed closer to the image of your Son. I pray that your word will go forth and accomplish that which it purposes, Lord. 
Lord, I'm thankful for everything you've done, and I'm thankful for that which you continue to do. We pray for these things in your Son's name. Amen. One of the saddest things, and specifically with the graduating seniors, that I see is the dropout rate of church attendance of graduates who, once they graduate, they're no longer in church in the next few years. The dropout rate, I've heard, can be somewhere, people say it's somewhere between 75 to 90 percent of teenagers who, when they leave church, when they graduate high school, will leave church. Some people think that in order to keep teenagers is to entertain them, but when that happens, when they're no longer part of the youth group, they leave. And what you, and I'm thinking of when I was uh, in youth group at my parents' church, we had a pre- really big size youth group with, I think, maybe total within the jun- junior high and high school, there was 60 to 80 kids. And I can think a lot of them who were faithful, who were leaders in the youth group, are, no, are now nowhere walking with God. Some of them have confessed basically to be atheists. Other of them just, they say that they're Christian, but the way that they live is not what, how God wants. Many times, teens walk away from church. And it's for two reasons that they walk away from church. Either they are unregenerate, they are unsaved, and they do not care about the things of God, or they become like Solomon here, and they turn their heart away from God. Now, while this message was um, thought about what to preach with the graduates given their testimony, and we're honoring them tonight in a final charge and challenge to them, but this is also for all of us, is that we all have to make sure that we don't allow the cares of this life and the things of this life to turn our hearts away from God. And it's very easy to. It's very easy to let just the things of life and work and family and school and all these things to, make, to allow us just to have our heart turned away from the Lord. In chapter 2 of 1 Kings, David charges his son Solomon, he's on his deathbed, and he charges Solomon to be strong and to show himself a man and to keep the commandments of the Lord. Solomon, and as we read in chapter 3, Solomon was the king of Israel, and he felt so much pressure with that responsibility that he asked God for wisdom. And God blessed him with that, and he also gave him riches and honor, and he became the wisest king. He then constructs the temple, and then he builds his own house, and then he spends longer on that than the temple. But then once at the dedication of the temple, he brings the Ark of the Covenant to the temple, and that's where the glory of the Lord fills the temple, and the temple is dedicated. The Lord then appears to Solomon again in chapter number 9 and tells him that if he walks in God's ways and follows him, then the throne would be established in Israel forever. But if the nation turns away from God, then would there not always be a king on the throne in Israel? And here in chapter number 11, if you look at verse 11, after Solomon has turned away from God, the Bible says, Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant." Notwithstanding in thy days, I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. And we see in chapter number 12, Rehoboam, Solomon's son, becomes king, and then this kingdom splits into two. And why? Because we've seen that Solomon forsook God. Look at verse 6. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his Father. We see that he forsook God. He was once living for God and he desired and he had a desire to please God, as we read in chapter number three. But then, towards the end of his life, he forsook the Lord and did not fully go after the Lord. He wasn't fully following God. And we see many Christians today turn from the Lord. Some drop out of church, 
But, just, but you can still be in church and have your heart turned away from God. Because many people are at church not because they're not here or they're not at church because of the Lord. They're at church because it's what they do. It's maybe they have family and friends that they see or it's a ritual for them. But in their heart, they have been turned away from God. And they live the rest of the week living exactly like the world. And then on Sunday... They try to act spiritual and be, and they have a lot of hypocrisy. Your heart must be in to follow after God. You must not turn away from God. You must not turn away from the Lord. And what are signs that someone has turned from the Lord? What are signs that if someone is showing that they have turned away from God? First of all, I see it is ignoring God's word. Ignoring God's word. Look at verse number one of chapter 11. But King Solomon loved many strange women together of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. So Solomon disobeyed by loving strange women. These were women that were of a foreign land. Israel was not allowed to marry any of these women, and they were not allowed to the daughters of Israel were not allowed to marry the sons of these lands because of spiritual reasons. As it says, they would turn away their heart. Yet Solomon loved these women, these women and he married them. And if you look at verse 3, and he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. So he was... Ignoring God's word by marrying these women and having multiple wives. But if you look at chapter number 10, if you look at chapter number 10, look at verse number 14. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 603 score and six talents of gold. Beside that, he, he had of the merchantmen, of the traffic, of the spice merchants, and all of the kings of Arabia and of the governors of the country. And look at chapter, or look at chapter 10, verse number 26. And Solomon gathered together chariots and horsemen, and he had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen, whom he bestowed in the cities for chariots with the king at... Jerusalem. So Solomon not only multiplied wives to himself, breaking God's word, he also multiplied wealth to himself, and he multiplied horses to himself, which all go, goes against Deuteronomy chapter number 17, because Deuteronomy 17, 16, and 17 says, But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end that he should multiply horses. For as much as the Lord said unto you, you shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. He was not allowed to multiply three things. as And in that context, in Deuteronomy chapter 17, it's talking about the king. And that was wives, wealth, and horses. And as we've read, Solomon did all three of those things. We might not understand all of it um, as far as we, under, we can understand the wives, but with the horses, it's that God did not want them to trust in the military might, and he wanted them to trust in him. And he also did not want them to return to Egypt because Egypt was the primary country that exported horses in this day. And God did not want Israel to make some sort of alliance or to rely on Egypt in any way because he saved them out of Egypt. And he wants them to trust in him. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departeth from The Lord. So we were seeing here that he was disobeying God's word in multiple ways. A lot of people like to say that they love God, but then they disobey God. And Jesus in John 14 says that if you love me, keep my commandments. So if you want to say you love me, keep my 
commandments. Twice the Lord appeared to Solomon and told him to walk in the Lord's commands. And that is what he was charged with from his father David when he was on his, when David was on his deathbed. But twice the Lord himself told Solomon to walk in his commands. He did not have a messenger come and tell him like that. Sometimes if a messenger were to come, maybe the messenger wouldn't say it exactly how it was supposed to be said. But God himself told him to walk in his commands. And Solomon did not do that. Which is very interesting because if you look at chapter number 8, look, this is Saul, in chapter number 8, this is that the dedication of the temple. Solomon is talking to, and he is, Verse 55 says, And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Look at verse 58. That he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. Solomon himself told the people that we need to incline our hearts towards God and following his ways. Yet, as we see a couple chapters later, he did not do that. He was turned away from God. And because of that, there was consequences. Because disobedience to God will always lead to consequences. A lot of times we think, oh, we can handle a little sin, but we can't. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes be not burned? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet be not burned. Many times we think we can flirt with the little sin and say that, you know, I can do this. It's not too big of a deal. It's not too bad. And then it just leads us down a road we never thought we would go. Yeah. I heard from uh, Dr. Scheller that sin will always take you, will always keep you longer than you want to stay, take you further than you want to go, and cost you more than you want to pay. Yeah. And a lot of times we think that we can just, again, flirt with a little bit of sin, but it's playing with fire. As what I read in Proverbs 6. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? A lot of times we think that we can have a little bit of sin and have God too. And have a little bit of sin and that God's grace will not... We can be forgiven by God, but that doesn't mean that there's not always going to be consequences to our sin. And too many times we try to think... We don't think of the consequences. And here in 1 Kings, Solomon, because of his disobedience, it says that God said he will rend, he will tear, out the, the, tear the kingdom out from Solomon's son's reign. The Bible says in Proverbs 29, where there is no vision, the people perish. And that vision refers to the law of the Lord. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Many times we, again, think that we can handle sin when we really can't. And Solomon was, one of the, was the wisest man who ever lived, is what the Bible says. But here, quite frankly, he was acting a fool. There is, because he was going up, away from God's word, and there is no wisdom apart from God, so it's never wise to go against God's word. Too many times we do. Are you ignoring God's word? Is there some <clears throat> commands that you know that you need to do? And there's some commands that, you, that God has spoken to you, whether in your Bible reading or through preaching, and you say, that's nice, but that's not for me. Do you try and justify it in your heart? A lot of Christians do that. And it just shows that their heart has been turned away from God. That was one of Solomon's biggest issues, that he started disobeying God in multiple ways. He knew the law. He in, encouraged the people to follow the law. But towards the end of his life, he didn't. And there was major consequences with that. So first of all, the first sign we see is that for someone whose heart has turned away from God is that they ignore God's word. They ignore God's word. Number two... 
The second sign is that they are influenced by the wrong people. They were influenced by the wrong people. So Solomon, he married wives that says, loved many strange women. And it says in verse number two, you shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for they will turn away your heart after their gods. The reason why Israel was not allowed to intermarry with these other nations is because those nations would turn the Israelites' heart away from God. Deuteronomy 7 says, Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. The Israelites were not allowed to marry because God knew that it would that the Israelites married from people from these nations, it would turn away their heart from him. And for you teenagers who um, are graduating and um, or are going to soon be graduating and you're going to be thinking about marriage soon, you need to make sure that whoever you Mary is not only a believer, but is also walking with the Lord. You need to make sure that they are not a believer. You need to make sure that they are a believer and that they're not just a believer, but they're one who has a consistent, solid walk with God. Because Solomon here, he joins a list of Adam, Abraham, Jacob, and even Ahab, who all sinned at the influence of of their wives. We need to be, not only do you guys need to be careful on who you end up marrying, but you also need to be careful on who will befriend you, on who will be your friend, and who will you allow to have friendships, because there's this common phrase that even our society knows that says, show me your friends and I will show you your future. And if all your friends are just people who don't believe in God's word, who do not want to follow God, then they will turn you into being like them, where you will start ignoring God's word, where there will be some things where you say, you know what, I used to think that was a big deal, but now I don't. My friends can get away with it, so I can too. And you can be influenced away from God. And that is what Solomon was. But the one who is following God's commandment will not be influenced by the world. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And the psalmist is saying there that the one who is meditating God's word is not going to be following after the world. But the one who is following after the world cannot be, <clears throat> cannot be following after God. The wrong people will lead you away from God, while good influences will lead you toward God. And that is why Paul sets a big, example, big emphasis on being an example and following the example. Be, fo- be ye followers of me, even as I follow, even as I also am of Christ. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. Follow us because we're following the Lord. Yet too many Christians follow the world instead of the world, instead of the Lord. They follow the world's ways rather than God's ways. Many Christians commit spiritual Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm syndrome is where someone who is in an abusive situation or taken hostage and to cope, they start acting sympathetic to the ones who took them hostage. It is named after a situation in Stockholm, Sweden, where bank robbers were engaged in a six-day standoff with police. During this time, some of the hostages were sympathetic to the robbers and refused to testify against them and even raise money for their defense. That the people who held them hostage, these people were even raising money for their legal fees so that, for the defense. And many Christians can be like that. We are more sympathetic to the world than to the people who are, than to the Lord. I was talking about this in our Wednesday night class with the teenagers. I said that it used to be, you might see someone who is really trying to follow God. They're trying to please God in what they do. 
Sometimes Christians just say, oh, they're too much of a fanatic. No, they're just following the Lord. Amen. And too many times we try to excuse our own sin by calling them that. And if someone who does not believe the Bible tries to influence you, you need to cut off their influence. And sometimes that could be as far as, you know, removing a friendship. Amen. Because following the world will always lead to downfall. So who do you allow to influence you? In what ways are people allowed to, are, are causing you to be influenced away from God and towards the things of this world? And you need to make sure that who's ever in your life is not influencing you away from God, but towards God. There was this farmer, and one day he he had a bunch of uh, pesky crows on his field, and he goes and takes his shotgun and goes to shoot at them. Unfortunately, he did not see his sociable parrot to join the crows. After firing a few shots, he walked over to the fallen birds and was surprised to find his parrot badly ruffled with a broken wing. When the farmer's children saw the injured bird, they asked, Dad, what happened? The father simply replied, bad company. Too many times we are like that. We think that we can follow the way of the world and be okay. But the Bible says that the way of transgressors is hard. But too many times, we, in our pride, we think that we are more spiritual than we actually are. And we think that, you know, I can, I can handle it. And you, and you can't. We can't be allowing that all the people who influence us to be people who point us away from Christ. Because we will end up like them. So that's the second sign, is that you're influenced by the wrong people. First sign is ignoring God's word. Second sign is influenced by the wrong people. The third sign is that idolatry is committed. Idolatry is committed. Look at verse 4 of chapter 11. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Because of the influence that Solomon gave his wives, he turned from following God into serving and sacrificing unto all these idols. Yet the idols did nothing for Solomon. Everything that Solomon had, his wealth, his wisdom, even his fame came from God. Because Solomon asked for wisdom, and God said, not only will I give you wisdom, but I'll also give you riches and honor. And Solomon, at the end of his life, kind of turns back and starts sacrificing to all these gods who did not a single thing for him. They did nothing for him. Yet Solomon thought, I, can, I need to sacrifice to these gods. And that led to his downfall. And he was so open about his abominations, that if you look at verse 7, it says, Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem. In the hill that is before Jerusalem, that is referring to the Mount of Olives. The same place where Jesus ascended, and the same place where he will come back down, and at his second coming, Solomon defiles it by worshiping idols there. And it also says, after that, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. People who know their Bible know that Molech, that people sacrificed Molech by sacrificing and burning their children. He is the, it is the modern day, it is that day's equivalent to abortion. And Solomon was giving, sacrificing unto this God. Yeah, like I said, this idol did nothing for 
him and these idols do nothing for anyone. When God gives the Ten Commandments, he says, I am the Lord thy God, which have, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. God himself says to Moses, I'm the one who brought you out. Not the golden calf that, starts, that is made a few chapters later. I am the one who brought you out. You don't worship anyone else but me. But too many times we can worship things that we have made. We worship things that are made by our own hands. But this is the description of them in Psalm 115. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. These idols are inanimate objects, basically like these chairs up here. They can't do anything. But too many times we think we're willing to sacrifice to them. We're willing to, okay, we're willing to sacrifice time where we're supposed to be assembling together at church for these idols. Sports is a big one. People say, you know what, I don't need to go to church. I have a sporting event. I don't need to go to church because there's a sports game I want to watch on TV. Too many times, and there's plenty of other ones. Sometimes it could be work, and we need to work, but sometimes people just don't try to be at church. There are people who, you know, their family is their idol, so every time that family is around, they will not go to church. They will skip church for family events. Here's one good thing if you want to know if something is an idol. Will you skip church for it? Because if the answer is yes, it is 100% an idol. Because God says in Hebrews, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. And if, it's willing, and if you're willing to go into sin for something, it is definitely an idol. What idols have you made? This country is full of idols. We might not have statues. We might not have things that we burn incense to. We might not have things that we worship. We might not have like statues that we worship, but we have a whole lot of things that we can do, Amen. such as money, wealth. Some people don't want to... Their entire idol is popularity, or some people's idol is control. They need to be in charge of everything. Some people's idol is honestly themselves. They love themselves so much that they, that they want everyone to worship them. And there are people like that all around. And there are people like that in churches today who think they're all right. But here's the thing about idols. It's just like Solomon, he started making idols of, let's say, his wealth that was given to him by God. God gives him all this wealth, but then he starts multiplying it for himself. And so something that was given to us by God that we make into an idol, God can take that away from you as quickly as that. Let's say if your idol is sports, God can make sure you never play sports again. Sometimes people, their idol is music, and that whether it's singing or what, God can make sure you do not listen to her. If your idol is singing... God can make sure you don't sing again. Yeah. And too many times, we are so focused on our idols that we forget the one who truly has given us everything in this life. Amen. If you have breath today, it's because of God, Amen. not because of anything you've done. So why do we worship our idols that do nothing for us? Not only do they not do anything for us, anything positive, but in the passage I read, it says basically that idols are deaf, dumb, and blind. And it says that they that worship them, to paraphrase, are like unto them. Meaning it makes you spiritually deaf, dumb, and blind. And that is what, you, is that is what we tend to sacrifice to. Something that not only does not do anything positive for us, but actually hurts us. Too many times we have idols. And there are sometimes 
there are some things that we just need to let go of so that we can follow God. Because that's what happened with Solomon, is that he started worshiping idols instead of God who's given him everything. And he was ultimately punished for it, or Israel was punished for it. In Romans chapter 1, it says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but, keep, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. A couple of verses later it says, Who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. What has, in Romans 1, it talks about how we all have sinned. How we all have sinned. And how we got, all got into sin and it's because we weren't thankful and we glorified God not as God, but instead of glorifying God as God, we instead worshipped idols. And that led the entire humanity into sin. Idolatry is a sin that is so heinous in the Bible. But in today's society, we just think of idol as, oh, it's just something I struggle with. Oh, yeah, I struggle with truly worshipping God the way I should. But it's no big deal. There's nowhere in the Bible where that says idolatry is not a big deal. Amen. God hates idolatry because it's ultimately the because ult- it's the ultimate spit in the face to God. God, you gave me life. You blessed me with so many different things. But I don't care if you want me to worship you. I'll worship what I want. Yeah. And it's rampant in our churches. What idols have you made? Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, made idols. And it says in verse 8, And likewise he did for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrifice unto their God. So I don't know how many different idols, but it's probably several hundred idols that Solomon burned incense to and worshipped and sacrificed to. And none of them did a single thing for him. What idols have you made? What are you willing to sin for? It's a good way to determine if something is an idol. And here in this passage, this is the same Solomon who is the wisest man who ever lived. Yet he turned away from God. He started ignoring God's word. He was influenced by the wrong people. And he, and he started committing idolatry. And his heart was turned away from the Lord. Solomon did this, and he, like I said, he was the wisest man ever to walk on earth. That shows that any one of us, if we are not being diligent in our Christian walk, can easily turn away from God. We can have our hearts turned away from God. Is your heart in tune with God? Or, have you, or has your heart turned away from God? Too many people, and like I said, this is ultimately... a this is a charge for all of us, but specifically with this being Graduation Sunday, because I don't, my prayer is that none of these teenagers turn away from God. But the stats are that about, I've seen, I think most of them is between 75 to 80% of teenagers, as soon as they graduate high school, start dropping out of church. So we had eight seniors that, were, that we honored tonight, that would be six of them saying, I don't want anything to do with church, is what, this, is what that stat is. And too many times, we are not, including the teenagers, I think a lot of times, they might see the adults who have turned away from God, and they think it's okay for them. And that should challenge us as, you know, as adults and as me as a youth pastor and as you as parents to make sure that we are living a life for them to follow after, not one that allows them to be turned away from the Lord. Have you turned away from God? If you've turned away from God, you need to repent. And if there are things that you are seeing in your life, you need to get those things right. Because you never know when to the when you start walking away from God, you never know when you start realize you can be too far 
you're, you can never be too far from God, but a lot of times you think you can. God, it says, he, draw an eye unto him and he will draw an eye unto you. But many times, we can just go down that slippery slope where it's just hard to turn back to God. And God doesn't want us to do that. But we need to pay attention to God's word, not just hear it, but do it. We need to make sure the people in our life are influencing us towards him. And we need to tear down any idols that we have made so that we can truly worship the Lord and our heart can be right with him. Let's go to him in prayer. Dear Father, Lord, Lord, I just pray that as your word went forth, it accomplished that which you wanted it to, Lord. Lord, I pray for there to be many decisions that are made tonight, Lord, that people in the whatever area needs to get right, Lord, whether it's start obeying your word, whether it's cutting out sinful influences, or whether it's cutting down, cutting down our idols, Lord, that you allow us to make it, you give us wisdom, you give us and boldness to follow through. Lord, too many Christians are, have walked away from the Lord and ultimately have walked away from you, and it ultimately has hurt your testimony. People want nothing to do with church because they've seen a Christian who's walked away from God sometimes. And Lord, I pray that no one here will walk away from you, but we will all get right what we need to get right, and then so that we can fully follow you, Lord. We thank you for the Old Testament, what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, how these things, um, how in Romans 15, talking about how it's an, it's, it, the things that you wrote in the Old Testament were an example to us. And Lord, I pray that we learn from Solomon's example, Lord, and we realize that if he could do it, Lord, with all the wisdom that you've given him, we can do it. We can walk away from you. And Lord, I pray that my, my prayer is that that's not anyone here, but that we all turn back to you. Lord, I thank you just for this night. I thank you for these graduating seniors, Lord. Lord, just for them, uh, their faithfulness, Lord, and their uh, spirit, just being these past couple years that I've known them. Lord, just being able to have fun with them. And Lord, just I pray for them. I pray for, that you will um, continue to guide their life, Lord, for the, some, for the few who are still t- trying to make decisions, Lord. I pray that you will open up the next, their next steps that you want them to take, Lord. And Lord, as we have this time of fellowship, Lord, I'm thankful for it. I pray you just bless the time and bless the food, Lord. And I pray that we will give you all the honor and glory. Lord, we thank you for that which you've done, and we thank you for that which you continue to do. We pray for these things in your son's name. Amen. You are dismissed.